Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and today I'll be reading Xiao X Listener by me. So let's get into it. Xiao didn't need to dig into your past to know about your ex. But if anything, he didn't know how you looked like. And many of the details. You just told him that he wasn't the best for you and that's why you left. That he made you feel bad about many things. And that's why you couldn't bear to deal with him anymore. Xiao didn't ask any more questions. And what you said was enough for him. But little did both of you know that your ex would be wanting to join your life again. And he will be trying to do everything in his might just for one more chance from you. Way after you've moved on onto someone more amazing, that's someone in question being Xiao. Xiao, I am going to be going outside right now. But would you come to the shop? Meet me there. Is there a reason? Well, I was thinking we could go shopping. You know, there is a festival soon and I wanted to have a good dress. You say shyly, but it smiles at you. His expression softening. Of course, why not? I don't mind. And with that, you leave to go on with your day, and Chow goes on with his. All the while, you're aching for your work to end, so you can go shopping and half shower at your outfits. It was exciting, especially since he didn't always indulge you in these things, and you always thought that he would think they're silly. But whenever you would ask him, he would try his best. And lately, it seemed like he's been getting more invested, trying to give more opinions, and even suggest some outfits. It's begun to be fun with him, and he's been trying to get out of his shell as well. But the two of you had no idea just who you would be meeting tonight. And as you got off work, and fixed your hair and your makeup, you went to the store to meet him. You didn't realize that your ex was there as well. And Chow was going to be late, running an errand. As he browsed for some dresses, thinking of what to take and what to show Xiao when he appears, you didn't notice his eyes on you. The way that he's just trying to analyze when he should step in, when he should talk to you, and try to convince you to come back to him. That fool. And when he comes over to you, after having made sure that no one else was around, you're startled, jumping from your place. Hey, what are you doing here? Are you following me? You ask, getting a little bit more panicked as those thoughts keep swirling in your mind. But then he puts a hand on your shoulder, firm, and shakes his head. I don't need to follow you to know where you are. Regardless, I just want to say, I missed you. And I didn't. Get your hand off me, now. He doesn't listen, though. Instead, only bring an arm closer to you and begin to wrap it around your waist, pulling you in for a hug that you desperately want out of. Get away from me, you creep. I don't want to be with you anymore. You ruined everything. What makes you think you have the right to do this? You keep yelling at him. But he muffles your face into his shirt, keeping you quiet so no one else will notice. And just then, Xiao appears and sees him, and kicks him so hard and so roughly that when your ex falls, the floor simply cracks. What are you doing with her? He coughs, trying to get up, but Xiao steps on his chest. I was merely seeing my ex-girlfriend. What's your problem? My problem is that she doesn't want to be with you. So get away from her. And don't ever think you can approach her, with or without me around. Got it? And her ex eyes him for a little bit. And Chow gets more irritated, his glare hardening, and he gives him another kick. 
and Rex quickly mumbles out, I got it. Fine. I don't want to see her again. You can have her. He says, before quickly leaving. You're sitting there on the floor, pale, curled up, when Chow kneels down to you. And gently, and ever so slowly, wraps his arms around you. I'm here, Wyon. It's just me. He's gone now. No one's going to hurt you. You're safe. He says gently. I you trust him. His voice. Bringing you a warm feeling of safety and love. A feeling that you could be safe. That there was nothing for you to worry about. Nothing for you to be scared of. Because right now Shao was here. And he was going to protect you. He trusted Shao more than anyone. And he knew that as long as he was close, no one would be able to lay a hand on you. That's exactly why you let yourself melt into his arms. Let the tears slip out of your eyes. The Shao gently wiped them away, kissing your hair and stroking your back, holding you until you're stable enough, until you've let it all out. Do you want to go home? Or do you want to go on a walk? You could continue shopping if you want, but only if you're up to it. I picked a few dresses, you say quietly, your face tear stained, and Chad gives you a soft smile, his eyes full of love and adoration. We could buy them, and we could try them on at home if you don't want to be here. He smiled at him, wrapping your arms around him tighter and nodding. Shao ends up buying all the dresses that you've picked, and if they weren't your size, he would just return them or give them away. The process didn't matter as much. He had more money than he knew what to do with, and either way, Seeing that smile on your face, and the way that you were starting to feel a little bit more relaxed and distracted, it made it all the more worth it. He wanted to distract you, and to be able to get your mind off of that horrible being who ruined your day. And he was going to keep an eye on him, to make sure no repeat of this will ever happen again.